Hey folks, James Brandon here. Today we're going to go over this image of Delicate Arch in Arches National Park. And we're going to use it to show how to create kind of a composite image of the Milky Way and some light painting in the foreground. This is the finished image inside of Photoshop. And you can see here what we've done with it. I'll pull up the layers here. We can go all the way down to the bottom and see our before. So this is just the image of the Milky Way and then this is with um, part of the foreground. And then we kind of just worked our way up. So I'm gonna show you how to go uh, through each step inside of Lightroom to get the images ready and then inside of ultimately Photoshop to blend everything together. So let's just uh, hop right in. Let's go over to Lightroom. And this is uh, all of the images that we shot that night. I was leading a photography workshop out in Moab. And if you've ever been to Delicate Arch before, you'll know that there's you have the arch up here and then it's sitting on top of this bowl more or less this huge sandstone bowl that goes all the way out this way and all the way around and you can walk along the the rim or the edge of this bowl and then it kind of just sinks in and it's probably a good i don't know 100 200 feet deep um from the top all the way down to the bottom uh you know, if you fell, you, you probably wouldn't make it, unfortunately. Uh, people have died from falling off of the front of the arch here or and also behind the arch, um, which there's just a sheer cliff back there. It's, it's crazy. But um, I, I'm saying that to say that I was at the top of the bowl and our workshop group, along with my co-instructor, Mike, they went down to the bottom of the bowl. So I was at the very top light painting for the group. So I wasn't even concerned about my own shots. What I did was I set my camera up right here on the ledge. Uh, I put it really low to the ground, pretty much just flat. And then I set it up for a time lapse. So it was just these 30 second exposures at F4 ISO 4000. And I just set the time lapse and then I went over and started light painting for the group. I didn't really even know if I would come out with anything because I wasn't, you know, I had no idea when my exposures were going off. I didn't know if I was going to be painting the whole time or too much or whatever. I just had no idea. But I was, you know, pleasantly surprised to come back to my camera and see quite a few really cool images. So, so yeah, this is me right here, uh, light painting for our group. And when you see these starbursts, it's when I'm looking back towards the camera Um not not by choice, not on not on purpose. Uh, if I looked back at the camera, it was just by mistake. But it was a happy accident, and it caused these uh, starbursts. So we'll work with it. But you can see as I scroll through, you know, I'm standing under the arch there. Uh, let's see if we keep going. I'm using the red part of my headlamp to paint it for him. And there, I got a good one there. And you can see, you know, this is when I'm walking back or walking to the arch getting closer now I'm coming back for my camera okay so you can see you know the succession through the through the images here all right so what we want to do here is we want to find the best images to use uh, for the composite and as I scroll through these through these images you'll see that the Milky Way is just slowly rising into the sky I'm going backwards so it looks like it's setting but um, I can't use these images here because you'll see as I get closer, the composition I think is going to change slightly. Well, I thought I saw it change. Maybe I didn't. Okay, so let's go to grid view and just go through and pick up the images that I think I might want to use. I want to use an image where the Milky Way is nice and high in the sky not where it's being cut off by the arch like it is you know back here i want to wait till it rises just above the arch for my first milky way shot so let's go maybe back to one of these okay i'm thinking maybe like right here let's do this one Okay, so this is a good starting point. We'll find a silhouetted one there.
Okay, so we're gonna use this image right here for our Milky Way. And the reason I'm using this one is because there's no uh, lighting in the foreground. I didn't have my headlamp on for this shot. We can just focus on the Milky Way here. So let's jump into the develop module and get started on processing the Milky Way. So there's a few settings that are very specific to night sky, Milky Way, astrophotography type thing, uh, type images that you don't really typically do with other images. So I'll go through here. We're gonna just gonna, you know, we're gonna play in the basic mode mainly. The first thing that you usually wanna do is, you know, if you need to brighten it up a little bit, uh, you can do that. And then I really like contrast, highlights, and clarity and vibrance in my uh, Milky Way shots. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna just hit this with a good helping of contrast and that's going to make the Milky Way just kind of pop like that. Then I'll bring my highlights. I'm going to just pop them up and make sure, you know, I bring them up until it starts looking kind of blown out in the center here. This is called the celestial center or the galactic core, galactic center of the Milky Way. It's just one of the brightest part or the brightest part. So if you bring it up too much, it starts looking all blown out. But you just you want to bring it up a little bit because it's going to make everything pop a little bit. All right, then I really like a lot of clarity in here because it's gonna make everything pop just that much more. Vibrance up. And then the last thing, you can see how it kind of just looks really yellow and kind of green. I don't like that at all in my Milky Way shots. I really like a nice cool sky because it's gonna make the yellows and um, any other color that might show up in the Milky Way just pop that much more. So I'll come up to my temperature and then just bring this back. And you'll see how different it looks now. So we'll bring in a little bit more contrast. Okay, a little bit more vibrance. All right, something like that. So this is our before and after. Okay, big difference. Okay, I don't think there's a whole lot more that I need to do with the sky to be honest I'm pretty happy with it there uh, I'm I really just want to get it as close as possible inside of Lightroom because I can do all the finishing touches inside of uh, Photoshop so I'm just gonna get everything close right now okay so now that that's done I will uh, throw a one star rating on this so I'm just gonna hit one and that really just selects it so that I can um, sort the images later and make sure that I have all the ones that I want to take into Photoshop. Okay, next thing I'm going to do, and uh, before I go to these images, I want to bring this to your attention. Uh, you're going to have a decent amount of noise. So this is three to one. This is more than 100%. But if we come back even to 100%, we're going to have noise in our Milky Way and in our night sky images. It's just part of it. I'm shooting at ISO 4000. You know, if I go to the before image, you can see that there's very little noise. And this is from the A7S at ISO 4000. So this is a really, really clean looking image. Um, not a whole lot of, you know, dead pixels anywhere. Everything looks really, really nice. But when you start pushing those pixels like we did, you're gonna start getting stuff like this. And you can just see a little bit of noise in the sky. But where it really gets bad is in your shadow areas. And what this is, what we're looking at here is uh, dead pixels or hot pixels. They're not really dead because you know they're, they're, they're still gonna work later. They're more like just hot pixels. And what happens is when you shoot uh, long exposures and especially in time-lapse mode, those pixels start to warm up or your, and your, your sensor and your camera warms up and it causes these. So what we wanna do a really good reason to use foreground images uh, with your light painting is you can just get rid of all of that. So if I hop over to this image, this is from the same you know exposure. There's a few little hot pixels here and there, but not a whole lot. It's certainly something we can work with. So what I want to do is I want to brighten this one up just a little bit. Okay, I'm all, I'm not even looking at the sky anymore. I'm only looking at the arch right here. Oh, come on. Let's get that out of here. All right. OK, 
give it a little bit of contrast and a little bit of vibrance. Okay, just something like that. So I want to use this one because it gives us some detail right here uh, in front of the arch and it's got a good starburst. So I'll tag this with one star. And then I'll come over here and just start going through these other images. Okay, so that one has a little bit more light. All right, sorry guys, I'm not sure why it's trying to tell me to update all this right now. Get rid of that. Okay, back to work. All right, so this one has a little bit different light. We'll keep that one. And then I'm just gonna scroll through these and find the ones I like. Okay, so I like this Starburst uh, even more because it's not quite so much light right here, but I really like the light beneath the arch. So we'll grab that one. Okay, this is where I started painting with red. I probably won't end up using that. It's more, we were doing it just to show the students how you can use different colors of light and everything. And while I like the red, it looks kind of cool. It just doesn't end up looking like a, you know, very natural shot with those really, you know, vibrant red colors in there. But, you know, it's all just preference. I like this one because I was doing both uh, in one frame or in one 30 second exposure. I had the light on, um, you know, daylight and then I switched it over to red and shined it up above. And you can only see the, the starburst because I looked back at the camera. All right, so we'll grab that one. I don't think I'll need any of these. Okay, so now we will sort by uh, the star ratings. So we'll come over here to filter. If you don't see these, you can just go to this drop down box here and then turn your rating on which is right here. This should pop up after that. And then I'll just click uh, the one star. And that's gonna give us all of the images in this folder that are sorted with one star. So we won't pay attention to that, that first one. Um, so we have this one, we have this one for the sky, and then we have a few of these here. Okay, I wanna make sure, cause I processed this one a little bit, I wanna make sure that these other ones match these settings. So what I'll do there is I'm gonna hold down Command or Control and then click these other exposures like that. Skipping the sky one because we don't wanna mess with that one. And then I'll come over here to Sync. And then I think I can get away with just checking all because I did pretty minor stuff, nothing major. So I don't have to worry about anything else, but that should sync those up. Okay, and now I will click uh, this one right here for the sky. And now I have all of the images that I wanna use selected. From here, I will right click. You can click on any of them, it doesn't matter as long as they're all selected. Just right click, choose edit in. And if you're only working with one image, you wanna just choose edit in Adobe Photoshop. But we have multiple images selected, so we're gonna come all the way down to the bottom here and choose open as layers in Photoshop. And that's gonna take all of these images open up Photoshop and it's going to put them all in one document where each separate uh, image is its own layer. And this is why Lightroom is so great because it works so fluidly and seamlessly with Photoshop. Okay, and there we go. So we have all of the images opened up. That was pretty quick. From here, you just have to kind of know how you work inside of Photoshop because everybody kind of does it differently. I like to have, you know, for a Milky Way shot, I want to have my sky as kind of my base exposure. So I'm going to bring that all the way down to the bottom here and then turn everything off. And to do that, I will just option or alt click the base layer here. And that's going to make sure all of these aren't showing up. So this is my, my uh, sky exposure. Now, what I want to do is set a good foundation for processing this image. And what I mean by that is creating a good selection to separate the sky and the background. And there's certainly, you know, many different ways you can do that. Um, one way is to try to use like luminosity masks. And if you wanted to do that, you would, you know, go to your RGB channels here and, you know, find something like this green one because it has, you know, the brightest sky as opposed to the foreground here. And you could load it up as a selection and create a new alpha channel, deselect it. 
And then we can bring up uh, Commander Control L to bring up a levels adjustment layer. And what you want to do here is, or what you're trying to do here is just blow the sky totally out and then have a really dark sky. But with these Milky Way shots and night sky images, it just, it's kind of hard to do. You know, you can get the, the foreground really black, but you have issues with these uh, hot pixels. And then it's just hard to get a really good selection with all that's going on in the sky between your highlights and your shadows. So I usually don't use luminosity masks for the night skies as far as making masks goes. So instead, what I like to do, since I have this silhouetted uh, foreground, I will actually just go over here. I don't use this tool very often, but for uh, in an instance like this, it'll work pretty nicely. We'll just drag this over and you can see that it's creating a really good solid selection of our foreground. Now we want to make sure that we get underneath the arch too. So we'll lower the size down of our brush and we're going to hold down the option or alt key and then draw inside of the arch too. Okay, so that is a pretty solid uh, selection. We'll, we'll test it out. We'll go up to our first image here, turn that on. You can see that the selection is still there. And then we're going to hit the mask icon down here at the bottom. And there we go. So now we have our sky dropped in with the foreground. And the reason that you're seeing it like this is because we have this mask here. If I uh, command, or I'm sorry, option click this mask, this is what the mask looks like. And you can see that it's really quite accurate. It follows the ridge line really nicely. You can see all the little uh, nooks and crannies that it's going into, especially this little notch under the arch that tells us that it's you know picking up the contrast really well. So we'll go back here. And the reason that you're seeing it like this is because the mask is on this layer here and white reveals while black conceals. So the white of the mask is revealing the foreground. The black is concealing the sky. And when you conceal something on a layer, the only thing that shows up after that is anything beneath it. So it's showing what's beneath the layer because you're concealing it from that one. I hope that makes sense. Uh, if I invert the mask, it'll be the opposite. Now we're you know, showing the foreground from the base layer and the sky from the top layer. And that's the opposite of what we want, obviously. So. Okay, and you know, just by doing that mask, we've pretty much eliminated most of the problem with the hot pixels in the foreground. We don't have to really even worry about it anymore. If I zoom in here to 100%, you can see how much cleaner um, this image looks. So we have a few you know, very small hot pixels here and there, but it's so little, I'm not even really that concerned with it. Okay, uh, the next thing we wanna do is we want to have our base layer, of course, um, but I'm not sure I want this one to be it. So let's turn on some of these other layers. Okay, just scrolling through here. You know, this one has a little bit of the red on it. I might actually just drag, I might use this as my base layer. So I'll drag this layer down, my base foreground layer, of course. And then I'm just gonna replace this, the uh, mask here, drag that down too. So I'm like, yeah, I like this one a lot more for my, my base image. So these two layers together are making my base. And then from here, um, all of these ones, I wanna blend in with this exposure, but I don't wanna start stacking pixels on top of each other unless I absolutely have to. And that's where blend modes come in. So this is how we're gonna really combine these. So I wanna look at this image here and figure out what I like from this image. I, I don't wanna bring in that red, I've decided, because it's just gonna compete for attention and I just want it to kind of look uniform. Um, but with this one, I'm getting all of this extra light right here and then down here, and I like that for sure. So I definitely wanna bring that in. So what I'll do is I will add a black mask uh, to this layer Hold down the Option or Alt key and hit the mask icon. And then I'm gonna set the blend mode of this entire layer to lighten like this. And you can't see any change there, but what it's gonna do is it's only gonna allow uh, bright pixels through. It's gonna you know, leave the shadow ones away. 
So I'll bring up my brush and I want to make sure that I'm painting on the mask, of course. I want to paint with white and I'm just going to do 100%. And as I paint along here, you'll see that light start coming through. Okay. And that looks pretty good. So I've essentially just combined those two layers and taken advantage of just the best part. And I don't even know if that red would show up. Yeah, the, the white kind of just overpowers it for whatever reason. Okay, I don't really care for how bright it got right here. So I'll paint that. Let's see. Let's just paint it out a little bit. Well, maybe it's going to be too dark. Okay, so I'll just accept it. I don't think it's blown out. Okay, there we go. All right, so now we'll go up to the next layer and see if there's anything with this one that we like. I think this one we can just kind of drop. It's not doing anything. We already have enough light up here, so I will just delete this one. And then this one. Okay, so this one has a little bit more light down here that we might want to take advantage of. So again, I'll just set it to lighten and I'll do it this time without the mask so you can see what it does. You obviously have to throw that black mask on because look what it's done to the sky. It's created star trails in it and it's bringing in the, some of the color from the other image. So that's why we throw that black mask on like that and then just paint in the part that we want, which is down here. All right, I think that's a pretty cool look. If you say so myself. So we have our basic blend completed. All we have to do now is make the image pop a little bit more. The, the first issue that I'm seeing with this is that the color balance in the arch is kind of, in the, the sandstone in general, it's just not quite right. So we wanna warm it up a little bit and make it have that red sandstone feel a little bit. The, the best way to do that is to go for a curves adjustment layer. And you'll see this RGB drop down right here. You can just pop over to your red channel and then drag it. You, if you go down, it'll bring in green, but if you go up, it'll bring in red. And you can see that it's happening to the entire image. Well, all we have to do, and Let's go back to the beginning of Photoshop where I open up the layers and I said we want to build a solid foundation. And that foundation was creating a good mask between your uh, sky and your foreground. Well now, since we've built that foundation, we can revert back to it. And what that means is all we have to do is go down here and we see this one. If I just drug this mask up here, it's going to replace it and we're going to lose it from down here. If you hold down the option key and then drag it, it's going to copy it and then drag it. So hit yes, and there we go. Now we have a red foreground and the sky is left as it was. And if you feel like you went too far, you can just go back to your red channel and then drag this back a little bit. You can also, you know, just leave it where it is. And then on your layer, you can just drag the opacity back and then just get it to a sweet spot there. Okay, so I'll just do this method. It's fine. So probably something right around there. Another thing I'm noticing that I'm not super crazy about is that this red color cast that we're kind of introducing here is bleeding into the light right here. So I'll bring up my brush uh, make sure that the mask is selected. And then I'm going to paint out um, the result from that light. And it'll give us that kind of green glow back. So just like that. Okay. So we've combined the images. We've added some uh, color correction to the arch and the sandstone. And now we can work on the Milky Way. So to do that, I usually grab either a curves or a levels adjustment layer, but we'll do levels here. And what I like to do is just pull the highlights up 
okay and then pull the shadows and midtones in and you can kind of just grab each one and just kind of inch it along but probably somewhere around there and then what I like to do is um, you know we want to paint this in selectively we don't want to just do it to the entire sky so let me see if I can do this the first time because it, it requires a few steps um, what I want to do is first grab this image up here okay replace yes and then we're going to invert it so it's just the sky there um, okay so that's not exactly what I wanted to do so this, this is just part of working through Photoshop is you no matter how many times you do something sometimes you just have to work through it so I'm going to delete this layer mask okay I'm gonna throw a black mask over the image and I want to paint with white to bring in that um, selection but I want to use this mask to make sure that I don't bleed this um, levels layer into the foreground because I don't want to do that because you saw how bad it looked like look what it's doing to the foreground it's blowing the highlights and the shadows out completely so what I'll do is I'll load this selection up but this again this is the foreground and not the sky so we need to invert this so I'm going to do shift command I okay now we have the sky selected and I want to hide those marching ants so we'll go up to view show and then turn the selection edges off just because it's they're kind of annoying and now if I've done this right I should be able to just paint over the sky here without messing with the foreground and now we'll revert back to the mask to see if it worked see that so I painted with the white but since I loaded this mask up over here and inverted it now we have the white sky and the black arch and I can just brush freely you know over this entire image if I wanted to do the sky globally I could do that but I don't I just want it to be you know in select parts of the sky okay so I'll paint with like 30% opacity and just kind of brush through the sky to taste I suppose all right I think that looks pretty good um, that gave us a nice little extra pop that we wanted now I'm looking at the sky and I think it just kind of looks a little bit too green so I'll do another curves adjustment layer and this time I'll grab my blue channel and then just cool the sky down a little bit if you go too far you know it starts to look really weird so you just want to find that good sweet spot so probably right there okay and we had our sky um, already selected so that's why I used that same mask okay guys uh, I think that's a pretty good place to stop uh, we have a little bit of cleanup work to do real quick so shift command N will bring us a new blank layer and we'll call this cleanup I just noticed this uh, plane trail right here you can see how it has like these blinky lights so with J which is the healing brush we'll just draw over that to get rid of it okay that will work go back out to 100 percent or to fill and now I think we're in a good place to stop let's uh, zoom in make sure we don't have any really obvious dead pixels or hot pixels you can go through and any ones that just catch your eye with that same healing brush you can just kind of you know pop over them to get rid of them there's one there but certainly a lot less than if we had used that other image the the silhouette that would have been a disaster okay there we go all right go to full screen and this is our finished image guys if you have any questions at all leave them in the comments and i will do everything i can to get back to you all right thanks and i'll talk to you soon bye